Hello folks, so uh, I'm going to talk about question selection in quant. And so I'm going to talk about what say quant's question selection. And so what should be the mechanism of this to select questions in quant? And so I'm going to give a kind of broad overview, carve out your own question selection strategy. And within the last mile of preparation, you need to own your preparation. This is what I like. This is my style. These are my topics. Uh, these kind of questions I won't touch. These totally I'll do. Uh, I will do this many in round one, round two. This is my target. This is what I'm hoping for. All of those, uh, you take all these inputs and then make your own. I'm saying this right up front because now is not the time to take somebody else's strategy and adapt. Now is the time to take an input from your own thing and put it in there. So again, I'm not going to carve out one question selection strategy as I'm going to say some themes for decision making. And so we always keep talking about round one, round two. And so sometimes students ask me, what is round one, what is round two? And questions to tell two in round one, first time. Questions that I won't touch. And so that's a broad definition. And so decision making themes. And so for me, and so one access this level of difficulty, which is funda being tough to grab and ideas uh, that are tricky, I don't know how to do this type thing. Another access is time. Okay. This is easy and tough. Quickly we can do time consuming. So obviously, the one that I want to do first in round one is this. I know how to do, this can be done quickly. Both conditions being satisfied, I'll jump and attack this. That's my territory. Right? So, what I don't want to do at all, I have no idea how to do this. This has four variables. Looks like it is it'll be time consuming as well. I don't even know how to do this, but it already looks still time consuming. It's not a juicy idea. It's some weird stuff. My round two is doable things, but time consuming. I'll come to this. I have got it, but it will take me time. Okay. Then I go here. From here, if needed, if I have the time, if I still have more bandwidth with me, I will go here. So I will start here, go here, go there. Right. So Now, what are the topics that naturally sit for you here? You have to think about. I am very comfortable topic wise with geometry, permutation combination, probability. Um, trigonometry, functions, they, I love them. I like these topics. Fine. Many people don't like these topics. Fine. So they don't want to do these things. But then the topic will be tough. So topic itself makes you choose. It creates a level of difficulty. Level of difficulty is not standard across people. There, there are styles. So think about layering set of topics here. For you, which topic is easy for you? Which topic is tough for you? Keep that in mind. Have rules for what you will gravitate towards. Have better, harsher, clearer, firmer rules for what you will not touch. Very, very important. Another theme that I want to touch on. When in doubt, leave. When in doubt, leave. This question seems long. Leave. Three variables. Leave. I have not got the idea. Leave. I tried this. Answers are not even close. Leave. This is from binomial theorem, leave. Have rules for leaving, not rules for selecting. Super important. And so when in doubt, leave. Right? This is your broad theme. Right? So I want to attack easy questions that can be done quickly enough. I'll finish them. Then I'll go to questions that are doable, but slightly time consuming. And then if I still have bandwidth, I'll go towards the tougher ideas, but perhaps those that are quicker. I'll never touch these. And this is my broad, broad idea. Again, what topics are easy? What work for you? What are the things that are that are in your zone? You have to have a sense of that. Have better rules for leaving than for selecting. Very simple. Right? Now, what is this round one? How many should I aim to attempt in round one? Don't have a specific number that you will definitely hit. Don't have a number that you should that minimum or maximum. Right? So have a have have a boundary. Say in round one, I look to attempt between six to twelve questions. But don't have a have a mechanism where you say I have to select twelve questions in round one. Then there's no decision making. You're selecting twelve questions. 
round one i have to do 14 questions no 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 don't do that fine so keep this the, your sweet spot once alive and then kill others other things to keep in mind when you are doing that round one you look at question number one two three four five and then attacking them your question solving part has to be dynamic what do i mean by that your question selection rule is a question that you like to do you think it's in a sweet spot it takes less time don't write down question number three and then look at all 22 questions very silly take question number three mark the right answer feel good that you've got plus three marks read question number four though you cannot you cannot afford to spend seven minutes on this paper looking at all the questions deciding which questions to attempt and then attempt doesn't work question one ah uh, vague question two oh too tough question three my sweet spot attempt question four again sweet spot attempt five tricky i don't even know what's happening leave six time consuming but in my preferred topic mark come back to it later go to seven when in doubt leave keep skipping but keep solving don't say i'll take all my decisions and then come back one you spend an insane amount of time taking the decision and two decisions are not foolproof you scan a question and then you feel like it's very easy when you solve it there are clauses and sub clauses and no answer matches you end up spending more and more time so it can be it is very much possible that you have taken seven minutes to take a decision the first question that you thought was easy is not easy there are 11 minutes into the paper having attempted zero questions and criminal absolutely criminal so don't do that the question selection has to be dynamic right the level of difficulty gauging that the tougher the paper seems the more happily you should leave questions and so the, all of us have a level of difficulty below which we'll attempt and it's almost like saying look there is a bar level of difficulty is a chart like this i have a imaginary bar like this i read this question and i find if it is easier than this i'll try tougher than this i'll leave that's how we, we operate fine so easy is here i'll do very tough i'll leave and then we have a bar in our head how difficult is our, our line right? tougher the paper leave more merrily because in a tough paper seven questions could be a breakthrough seven and you're flying at 99 percentile question number 20 21 22 could be very easy could be 21 22 20 could be here level of difficulty wise you cannot afford to have not even seen them tougher the paper is leave more merrily so the, the very tough paper i'll keep skipping i'll keep speaking i'll hit my absolute great four questions now i'll go back to what i have skipped what i have not skipped brilliant the final bit in terms of uh, the round one round two strategy all of that you should look to have seen almost all the questions the very easy paper and you're attempting and attempting and attempting you're merely going you reach question number 22 only at minute number 38 but you've attempted 16 of those questions that's completely fine good paper you're nailing it you'll be very happy and so don't don't say i have to finish round one and come back you're not even coming back good you're going well right sometimes the final bit the nuance the fine details the last three minutes lots of time they go waste you're scanning you finished you see the timer only three minutes are remaining i will have looked at all the questions i'll see if I, my answers are right waste of time i won't even verify this i'm just killing my three minutes and then I'll look at questions that I've skipped. Nothing is really nice and worth going for. Maybe there's another easier question than this. I have now only one and a quarter minutes. Absolute easy question I'll do. Maybe I'll look at all the theta questions and mark three, four, five. I'll read the question. What answer could be there? I'll put done. Khatam time. And so when it comes to this part, right in the last three minutes, what I usually do is I'll, I'll scribble down question numbers. And so somewhere on the pad where I say, look, irritating question time consuming but i can get this i won't pause for a second and i finish whatever minute i'm in i've done all this i'll go straight to question number 11 no decision making processing and all that that's why i've scribbled i'll scribble maybe two three question numbers there nothing more than that if i have seven minutes remaining i'll have used all my algorithm method decision making all of that i have three minutes remaining i don't know what to do i don't process i can't hack i can't take one minute to consolidate and i'm cooked i go straight to one question number maximize that time get out of that and so super important and so uh, th these are the themes to keep in mind the, this idea is super important easy my preferred topic i've got the funda 
and in the not too time consuming that's your zone you have to do that first fine final thing how soon do i leave a question how much time can i skip in time to leave and i've spent 3 minutes on it should i leave i've spent 40 seconds on it should i leave i've spent 1 and 1/2 minutes on it should i leave how much time is the time to leave a question and it depends on several things and so tough paper you can spend more time you are going for you 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 are aiming to some, you are you are in the 99th percentile range you have to leave quicker you can your best case scenario is to get 20 marks you have to spend more time getting questions right so your level of competence level of difficulty of the paper both of them are important variables right the other important variable is funda yes or no and what i mean by that every time you read a question there is a bit of cracking to know what the method is right so you have to look at a question and go okay this 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 quadratic equation and then inequality so i have to find out discriminant and then think about what's happening i know what i have to do now i am filling the thing right if you crack the funda this is a yes then the time to execute or finalize or solve or compute that's fine you crack the funda in 20 seconds you crack the funda you see through that question even if it takes 2 and 1/2 minute 3 minutes it's great you 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 are in this phase and you have spent 45 seconds leave 45 seconds level you leave you spend 45 seconds you process this question you don't know where it is headed skip go to some other question so the decision making is not an overall time thing have i got the funda or have i not got the funda I know exactly what I am doing. Two minutes, three minutes, three and a half minutes, fine. I don't know what to do with this question. At that second, leave. And so the time to leave a question is not a standard thing. It's not 90 seconds. I have not got the answer. No, no. 120 seconds, but you know exactly what you are doing. Hang in there. Spend another 60 seconds. Get those marks. 45 seconds, but I don't know what I am doing. I don't know what I am executing. What is this method? I have not cracked it. Leave. It's very important. This decision drives this time. Right, so generally, these are the themes. Again, I'm repeating: the decision-making algorithm has to be something that um, that that you have to carve out based on your strengths, your preferred topics, your styles of questions. So, right? if I had to give my example here, okay? I don't like speed time distance. Very simple, very happy. I I know that I'll definitely get it right. But I look at speed time distance. is an appeal to me i feel like it'll take more time i'll leave it always round to always round to fine right? so i'll keep them there and right? so i have some rules like that you have to carve out your rules based on topics styles of questions that, that you gravitate to fine right? so spend some time thinking about what topics naturally fit here obviously there can be a percentage of question that is very difficult and a functions question that is very easy of course I'm not denying that Right, but topics play a role in our, how we feel about that. So think about the topics. Right? So last lap, own your preparation. Have a clear cut idea about what your approach is, what your targets are, what your plan is. Then let the cards fall where they fall. Right? Best wishes.